Now, based on this single input method, uh, we found a very interesting property in the sense that uh, while it is being tracked by the camera, this method is invariant of whole arm motion. So if you move your um, arm um, here and there, it doesn't affect uh, the cursor position because it is based on the relative uh, location of both fingers. So this is invariant of whole arm motion as well as head motion. So if you change your view, assuming the fingers don't go out of view or the angle doesn't really skew. Uh, the um, relative position of the fingers remain the same, which means the on-screen cursor will not be affected. And we did a couple of experiments to verify this as well. So based on this, um, we suggest two new multimodal interaction methods uh, which provide multiple spatial inputs. Uh, the first one is called Armix. So Armix is uh, based on the concept that you can move your hand about and still not affect the position of X fingers. So then you actually can use your hand as a secondary input method. So uh, the way it works is you can control two simultaneous objects. For example, in this, uh, this is a spin-off of the evaluation we, are, uh, we conduct later on. Uh, so there's a purple square, a shaded square. Within that is a smaller uh, blue circle. So the blue circle <coughs> is controlled by the movement of X fingers, and the purple square is controlled by moving the entire arm together, keeping X fingers wherever it is. So I'll show you a demo. So it sort of works like this. So basically moving the arm controls the big square, and moving the fingers controls the circle. So that is arm X. Now, the second interaction method uh, we propose is also, oops, the video played. Okay, is also uh, uh, arising from this concept of um, stability with respect to viewpoint changes. So if your head moves, and um, assuming the, the hands are still in the view of the camera, this will still not affect the position of X fingers. So then the head was used as an additional input modality, and you combine, and head X actually combines uh, the head movement along with X fingers to create another multimodal input method, which controls two separate inputs. So input one is controlled by X fingers, and the second input is by head motion. Now, this is applicable in applications in VR which specifically do not require head gaze as, um, its, uh, as its primary input modality. This is um, applicable mostly in VR application scenarios where the viewpoint is more or less stationary, but you do want an immersive experience. So to put these in test, uh, first off, um, these were compared to a baseline condition where um, there was a work in 2003 which uh, talked of, uh, it was a very early work, but it could be applied in a VR scenario, which talked of identical 2D input methods. So I was looking at, so we wanted to evaluate these with input methods which solely used parts of our body as opposed to external controllers or buttons or joysticks. So there was a work which uh, compared um, two separate um, hand inputs to control two separate um, parameters on screen. And um, I well, it's in the paper, but it's not here. But so we discovered that that a that a interaction method like arm X performs better in a simple two D positioning task uh, when compared to two identical gestures. So um, in addition, we also did a. Uh, uh, an evaluation between the methods themselves, between the multimodal methods themselves. So the idea was to explore if this coupling of the hand and the finger together as a single um, sort of input, uh, it's a multimodal input modality, but you basically just separate the hand and finger into the different inputs. Um, so this was called a physically coupled um, multimodal interaction method, uh, and the head and X fingers interaction method, which was head X, basically decoupled both input methods into separate parts of the body, which was the head and the fingers. So that was called a decoupled interaction method. So a within subject design 
uh, with two factors was involved in the evaluation. So one was the interaction technique, uh, arm X and head X, and the second was the coordination level between uh, both uh, input modalities in each interaction technique. So basically, um, the aim of the evaluation was to see if in simple nested object positioning tasks, such as positioning a circle and a square uh, together, would um, be affected by physically coupled modalities or decoupled modalities, and also if the coordination between the input modalities were to increase, we were interested in learning the effects of these in VR. So um, the coordination levels were increased by keeping tar uh, by starting to move the different kinds of st uh, targets. So the first level was basically uh, low coordination, where uh, the nested uh, circle was so basically, the aim of the evaluation is to get the shaded circle inside the circular outline and the shaded square inside the square outline. Now, the shaded circle is always nested within the shaded square. So um, the first level involved the outlines being static on the screen, and you just have to go and place both um, inputs in the outlines. The second um, level involved a medium coordination level where the, out the big square outline started moving and you had to hold on, uh, you had to fit it in, you had to fit the shaded square in and also hold it for um, two seconds, um, sorry, five seconds um, to ensure that uh, you coordinate this movement, your hand movement or your head movement along with your movement of X fingers. Now the, sec uh, the third one involved very high coordination levels where both outlines were moving and you had to match them both and you had to really really coordinate both modalities to be able to do this task. So uh, these were the three levels um, uh, and um, users performed uh, each level, uh, users performed all three levels of each interaction technique uh, at one go followed by the next interaction technique. The orders were counterbalanced and we used, we had uh, 13 participants, five female, uh, to do this task. So the results were very interesting. It showed that in the first level there was mu not much of a difference. So what we compared was the task completion time per um, task of, uh, for each of the positioning tasks. And what we saw that uh, was for the first level there was not much of a difference between armx and headx in terms of performance. But as the levels increased, as the coordination level increased, we found that users performed increasingly faster using head X um, as compared to ARMX. And it became more and more difficult for users uh, using, um, to perform these tasks using arm X. So, um, and this difference was very significant. So we sort of uh, did a survey, a questionnaire, after the uh, evaluation to find out why this could be the reason. And um, there was a subjective survey where users um, rated uh, both methods in terms of, of fatigue and differentiation between modalities and the ease of control. So um, users basically said that arm X was basically um, a little more tiring than headaches, and some of the reasons they gave was because they were being assigned um, actions to the same part of the body, which is the hand and the fingers together. So that could lead to faster fatigue than um, when you assign different parts of the body, different input methods. Um, and there was no trouble for either method uh, for differentiating between the modalities, uh, which uh, provides a strong case for considering multimodal interaction as a whole. Um, and also HEDEX was easier to control than ARMEX. Many of the reasons given were they were able to distinguish between two disparate parts of the body given two disparate inputs easier than, um, than they were to distinguish between the same part of the body doing two separate inputs. So that was their sort of reasoning and this was validated by the quantitative and subjective results. Uh, as a result in the user task preference, um, L1 was more or less, um, headache still worn out in L1, it was still preferred, but there were many people who preferred the simplicity of armex, and some people were not used to, you know, moving their head about to move a target. But as the levels increased, people really, really started preferring headaches better. So it was 
interesting in the sense that it was those were very disparate parts of the body and people started being able to focus better on tasks using di different um, parts of the body to do each task. So to, corro to corroborate these results further, we actually created a game experience uh, sort of to make it a little fun. Um, and uh, it was a pizza game. Um, so basically users had to control that uh, purple box you see over there and um, place them over a pizza to sort of box the pizza. Um, again, this game had three levels of increasing coordination. The first one and the, the coordination levels were it differed in terms of the size and the location of the pizza. So in the first one, the pizzas were static. The second one, the pizzas were moving around and you had to go catch them. And in the third level, the pizzas actually started growing and shrinking and moving around and you had to go catch and maintain the um, box for five seconds. So um, the, the quantitative results of this study also uh, sort of uh, mirrored uh, the results we got with the user evaluation earlier, which was um, with increasing levels of coordination, headaches started performing better in such tasks. And, um, and this study actually focused more on qualitative user impressions of the interaction methods, the enjoyability, the playability, and it was found that users who used headaches found the game significantly more controllable easier and more playable, more enjoyable to play uh, when uh, using headaches as an, a multimodal in interaction method. So in summary, I, uh, we, this paper presents three interaction methods, one of which is a single input method, and the other two were based off on that. Um, Armex and Hedex, and Armex was the physically coupled method, and Hedex was the physically decoupled method um, of interacting with two different spatial inputs. It was found that as coordination levels increase, users start to prefer a physically decoupled multimodal interaction method. Now, the scope of the study extends to the design of multimodal interaction interactive applications in VR. And so designers of such applications, if they need uh, multiple spatial controls, could use uh, the findings from the study as a guideline on how to couple different forms of input methods together. So yes, uh, this was the study. In the future, we uh, plan to actually make this a bare hand interaction method, because right now, because of the user evaluation, we had to use um, um, finger coverings. Um, yeah, so that would be the main um, future direction of this. Um, and also, we are also planning to, we, we also sort of considered uh, coupling gaze based interaction with um, our X fingers and, and see where that leads. So, yes, um, yeah, so this is uh, the summary of my findings, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Great talk. So